Pearls, and you're watching the fan carpet. Tonight we're here at the European premiere of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, the rest of the Guardians, I mean, it's it, we're a vastly different uh, bunch of misfits. We've got a, a knife-wielding maniac, we've got a gun-toting raccoon, we've got a muscle-bound tree, and we've got a deadly green-skinned assassin. And uh, every one of them feels like an orphan, every one of them's running from something, and what they are running towards is uh, ultimately one another and a chance to be a hero. So I played Nebula, who is the female villain of the film. Um, she's basically making life as difficult as possible for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and she is a complete sadist. She puts men in headlocks. She's as bad as, as it gets. It's super exciting because uh, we have so many different kinds of movies. We're making a ton of films. We're having a blast doing it. And, uh, you know, every day I get to wake up and make comic movies come to life. It's really fun. Makeup took about four hours a day. Um, but it was, you know, kind of... Yeah, I got really close to my makeup team. It was about five five people on my makeup team, and they just kind of you know propped me up and worked around me and uh, kind of transformed me every day into Drax. But it was four hours, but it kind of just flew by because we were just having fun. I wanted to shave my head. I think I was looking for an excuse to do something drastic with my appearance anyway, so this was the perfect opportunity for me to just do, do something radical. What I wanted to bring to the character was just like, this feeling of what it was like to be a nine-year-old in the 80s and like what were your pop, what were my pop icons because he and I are the same exact age both born in 79 I was nine in 1988 just like him and I, I know what those movies meant to me everything from Star Wars to Back to the Future and, and the things in between the movie you know Footloose we the, like the soundtrack was the same for our lives so I was able to understand what it's like to be that a child of the 80s and imagine what uh, I would be if I were swept away into space and, and allowed to uh, you know, pursue my alter ego. I laughed a lot and they cut it out. <laughs> it, it, was a very, you know, it was a fun cast. Um, we all had a lot of fun and we all improvised a lot. So it was a lot of joking around. There, were, there was uh, more than a few takes where we didn't keep straight faces. <laughs> you know, where everybody just kind of burst out in laughter, but you know, thank God for editing. <laughs> Well, I love, I love the Marvel movies, and uh, uh, my son occasionally uh, shoves comics in front of me and says, no, this one is really good, you must read this one. So that's how it goes. As you'll appreciate, I'm, I'm fairly booked up at the moment, but you know, I'm, I'm mostly here for Karen, because she's in it. I just wanted to play her as a, as a deadly assassin and a warrior, and all she cares about is strength and, and killing. She's a killing machine. Um, and then I guess the femininity came from, naturally, from being a female. Um, no, you know, I... I, I didn't really have contact with him uh, when I left WWE and, and moving into films, but I was able to speak to him at this past WrestleMania when we already uh, wrapped on uh, Guardians, and he was actually pretty helpful with some advice he had. Yeah, he just wanted, you know, I was asking him how to, how he balances both because he still wrestles, still has film, and it's kind of really it's a tricky thing to do, you know, because uh, you know especially like the Marvel universe and the WWE universe are so big, uh, but yeah, he, he was very helpful on how to how I could balance both and about the characters is they all kind of slot together and everyone plays their really special part. A lot of it came from James Gunn's great script, but I, I think it's the, the, the relationships that I really love in the film. I love Rocket and Groot together. I love watching those two, seeing that kind of Rocket is his translator, he understands what Groot's talking about, and that Groot kind of has this softness that you don't expect out of this giant tree played by Vin Diesel. And there's this real softness to him, and there's something great about that interplay. And I also think the relationship between uh, between Chris Pratt and uh, Zoe Saldana is really great. You know, there's a little bit of a romance, but at the same time, she's such a kick-ass girl that she's not really going to get smoochy or anything. And there's something nice about it. You know, you don't see that often in film. I don't feel like she falls into the damsel in distress thing. She kind of gives as good as she gets, you know. And I think that's really cool to see uh, to see these two characters kind of suss each other out in that way. And I think the film's just full of these cool dynamic relationships like that. Well, I, it's, it's something you don't get very often. I mean, she really is. Terribly talented, very, very serious about the acting, and you know she 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 looks like that. You know, I mean that's it, it's something else. Uh, you, you don't you, you get one or the other usually, but she's that good, and she is nine feet tall, which is so unusual. It's really fun to have two women in a film having conversations about other things, things other than men. You know, which is um, a test that a lot of films fail. So this one definitely, you know, comes up in that. You know, I've been at Marvel for like 10 or 11 years now, uh, since the very beginning of Iron Man 1. And, and the thing for us has always been, we make one to two movies a year, and we have to make every movie good. Because that, in our mind, could always be the last film we get a chance to make. So we're always trying to make a great film. So we don't really look at it as the, as, you know, you know, we're a string of movies, whatever. Every time we make a film, it's like that's the film we're caring about, that's the film we're worrying about, that's the film we're putting our heart and attention into. And that's what makes it fun. Hey, Rollins, my dad. <laughs> um, it 
was really cool. I mean, he did the voice afterwards. Um, Sean Gunn, the, James Gunn, the director's brother, actually voiced it on set, which was really fun. He did a good job. But um, it was really cool. I mean, to, to be anything to do with Thanos, I know is very cool and important in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> There's so much pressure from the fans because they want a great film and they want to love it. And so they're looking for a reason to love it. So if you give them a reason not to, it's a total bummer, you know? So every time you go out there and you're looking at, we spend a lot of time looking at every single toy. We spend a lot of time looking at every uh, everything in the style guide that makes up the t-shirts and the hats and everything else. We want the whole thing to feel as cool and authentic and fun as possible because we want it all to work together and be just like super exciting, you know, for, for the fans and because we also love this stuff, you know. We, we'll get in arguments on, on emails about, you know, who approved that, who approved the, 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 the face mask on that action figure. I don't like it. It's not good enough, you know, and it's really like a bunch of nerdy fun guys that kind of, we kind of come to work and get to do this every day for a living. It's really fun. Well, that's all from us tonight and remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. What is that? It's a bomb. And you leave it lying around? I was gonna put it in a box. What's a box gonna do? You just wanna suck the joy out of everything.